Hello everyone, this is Jeff Chrysler of Rightway Heritage Trimming, here to talk to you about our Austin Healy trim panels. Okay, so I'm just going to show you the basics of how I make panels here. So I've got some uh, eighth inch birch plywood, which is what the factory used for the majority of the Austin Healy panels. And I've laid out my patterns and drawn them out. I've cut the basic oversized shape out with my jigsaw, so now I can finish it off on the bandsaw. Um, always keeping in mind if the panel has to curve, which these ones do a bend in the car, you want to make sure the grain's going the right way to allow that bend. See, this is a rear quarter panel for an Austin Healey BT-7 and because the finished panel will be riveted to a piece of steel and curve like that, you've always got to keep in mind the way the grain is going so it'll bend the right way. Finishing these all off, Just clean them up on the belt sander, so the edge is nice and straight. Of course, got to finish all the inner sanding by hand. These inner holes, of course, I drill the hole and then use my jigsaw to cut out the rest. So, once you get them sanded nice and you're happy with them and you're uh, ready to trim them in vinyl. So here you can see one that I've already done and it's the correct British thin bit British vinyl that was a non-stretch type of vinyl that they used on Healy's. Um, I should also note that uh, this of course is for a, a BN1 front kick panel and the earlier cars, BN1s in particular, uh, we found on all the originals that the panels were actually sanded round on the outer face. All the edges were sanded to a round shape everywhere. And uh, the later you go with Healy's, even by BN2, this practice seems to have stopped. Um, but certainly the early cars, we've, we found that on all of the earlier panels. So, of course, other panels like door panels and that, uh, they actually also get a bit of foam or, th or super thin wadding underneath of the vinyl to make them a little padded but these front these front wood panels on the rear quarters were always just uh, vinyl glued directly to the wood and uh, of course next step I always shellac the wood before I trim it so with all the sanding all finished I always give these guys a finish of this nice satin water-based uh, clear Varathane shellac um, helps to seal the wood. Of course, these will all be trimmed in vinyl, but better safe than sorry. These will last a lot longer. People always ask me about why the right hand side kick panel had this cutout in it, and it's for right hand drive cars. They did this on all the cars, but right hand drive cars that would give you a little bit of extra toe room where your feet were on the accelerator pedal. So that's why they had that cut out there. And 
notice I'm applying it with the green. Okay. So we'll let those dry and then we'll do the other side a little later. All right, so now that everything's dry and shellacked, you can see I've added some 332nd padding to the outside, much like the factory had, really thin stuff. And uh, I've also got my English leather cloth, vinyl, the cro proper vinyl that these used. So I can now wrap it. Okay, you can see I've finished trimming this. I've got the back panel on like they have. And now I've drawn a line half inch in from the edge of the pocket so that I can run my stitch line. It's always started about center. I've marked a little center line there. So, start the needle down. Obviously this requires heavy needle and industrial machine because I'm going right through the wood and vinyl and foam. Okay, so the panels are all finished now, so you can go ahead and get ready to install them. Now, one thing with the panels that I covered in foam, because of this foam is, you know, a nylon design, it'll, if you try to drill through it, your drill is liable to grab the foam and create a big lump of foam underneath. So you want to make sure that when you're do installing these door panels, you use an awl to poke the holes through. You mark your hole, find out where it is, and then just carefully use an awl to push all the way through the panel board. Do not use a drill. Now, for some of the Healy panels, um, there's a lot of the panels that go in the car have these creases so that they can fold and make a sh specific shape. Like these are for rear quarters on a BN6. These are some of the BN6 boot side boards. And of course, these are the panels that make up the inner door pockets. Um, so for these, we use this black panel board because it allows us to make a really nice crease like they should be. So, of course, all of our panel kits come with the proper number six Phillips oval head countersunk screws with the correct little cup washers that they had. And uh, you get a full set of those with every panel kit. So the panels are all finished off. Now I'm going to show you one little tool that I've made that I advise anybody to make. If you're trying to reuse the original screw holes on your car, you can locate them with this tool. Now I've made this out of uh, Meccano, which is a kid's toy a building set that you can get. And it comes with these strips and nuts and screws and washers. And you can make any just about anything you want out of it. So I've made this little hole finder tool. So you literally just slide this over the panel when you're trying to line it up in your car, and you put this into the original screw hole in the bodywork, and then you can mark that hole through on this side. Comes in handy. I use it all the time whenever I'm installing panels on cars. I want to point out that the original padding used on the earlier door panels was very thin and really didn't make much puffiness at all. The early 100 door panels had this suede-like material sewn inside the lower pocket areas that I reproduce accurately. 
As they evolved, they added stitching around the door pocket opening. Then with the 106 and early 3000, the suede material on the back was replaced with matching vinyl, and the inner door was now lined with two overlapping panels screwed in place with a third smaller panel lining the bottom of the inner pocket. With the introduction of wind-up windows in the BJ7, they trimmed a pressed aluminum panel with a thin pleated cover, and then covered over that with a familiar looking outer trim panel. With the BJ8, they came up with these entirely redesigned masonite panels, trimmed with thicker eighth and quarter inch foams, and riveted together as a complete panel, and used a stretch type of vinyl instead of the old vinyide. As the kick panels evolved, you can see the BN1 started with these taller wooden panels, whereas the BN2 design was shortened. Then, with the six-cylinder cars, we saw the right side panels get these cutouts added for better tow room. Then, by the time we reached the BJ8s, these panels were now reshaped taller and have some added foam to pad them out. As the rear quarters evolved, we started with these simple little panels on the 100s. With the introduction of the 106, the Longbridge BN4s had this style of panel, which also used some small filler pieces along the front edge. Then, with the move to Abington production, the design was replaced with these bigger, sleeker panels on later BN4s and BT7s. Meanwhile, the BN6 and 7 two-seaters used these intricately designed rear quarter panels constructed of several different pieces glued and screwed together. Finally, with the BJ7s and 8s, we see these big wooden and steel panels trimmed with foam and vinyl, which was even embossed on the BJ8s. Of course, I proudly offer all of these interior panel variations, all accurately made by hand for your Austin Healy, available through rightwayheritagetrim.com. Until next time, I'm Jeff Chrysler.